and welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast. Hey, here's what we got in store for this evening. We're going to make a quick stop in paradise over in Nassara and check in with our man Craig Sutton. He'll bring us the Marlin Report from my favorite billfish destination anywhere. Then we'll come back to Florida. We'll start up in the northeast corner, come all the way down the east coastline, all the way through the Keys, up the west coast, and out the panhandle to find out what Florida's fishing's been like this week. I got a question for the boys this week, too, that I want you to think about before you travel. What weather conditions drive their fishing? Everywhere is different. Over in the Panhandle, I've already talked with uh, Tyler Massey up in the Big Bend. William Tony says a northeast wind that blows all the water in here on the east coast makes it so difficult for us, makes it difficult for him because it blows all the water out, and he's got literally dry land where he usually fishes. So it's different all around the state, but we're going to find out just what it's like, what weather patterns trigger what fish in Florida. So sit back, make you a cool drink, and here we go. We're going to get started with a quick trip to Costa Rica to check in with our buddy Craig Sutton. Now, Craig will be brought to you tonight, just like all of our action spotters, by Yamaha. Reliability starts here by Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum, it's the best chum on earth. By Nasara Paradise Fishing, your dream vacation. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. And by Young Boats, you want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. Time to land in Costa Rica and check in with our man, Craig Sutton. All right, we're here in Costa Rica, and a main man is waiting for us at the airport. Craig what am I looking at coming into Nassara this time of year? Dolphin, 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 Ooh, dolphin. Love- <laughs> a few marlin mixed in. Yep. Um, you know, really, what's really unusual is this last week about the sales. We had just a precious few, but we had a real good marlin bite. Um, I don't, I don't think that's a trend that's going to last. But uh, you know, it's been some really nice big marlin. We got one today that was – I'm waiting to hear back on the client. He sent me the picture. It looks like he's in the upper 30s, maybe low 40s. But we had another one earlier. In the, we had two on the same boat, the Adventure, a little small boat. that One was definitely in the mid-40s. I sent you that picture. Was that the one and I then, called 48? Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And then we had one that was close to it, um, a, a few pounds smaller, but – I think it was on Thursday now, but uh, yeah, it's been good, man. The marlin's been real consistent. Well, and and what most people don't understand, because most of our listeners, uh, and we love them all, are here in Florida. When you're talking about sailfish over there, you're very often talking about a hundred, a hundred and ten pound fish, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah, or even more than that. You know, we we've had some months where the all the sailfish we caught well over 100 right here at that 150, 170 pound range. We get some big, big sailfish. I mean, real big. 100 pounder is not that big of a sailfish for us. Yep, yep. Craig, real quickly before I, I let you go, what drives your, what weather pattern drives your fishing over there? <laughs> no, no bad weather. <laughs> no bad weather? Is, is, I mean, is, we really, from the, from that full moon in, in uh, October, Till the end of May, the full moon, and the end of May or first of June, it's pretty much cobalt clear skies every day. Now, every once in a while, we'll have the offshores low early in the morning. Uh huh. But by seven, by eight, eight thirty, nine, ten o'clock, it backs off and just calms right down. And very rarely does the the offshore winds for us go offshore. They usually stop about a mile or two from the beach. Now, some days they do in like March, but it's usually at the same time we've had a big front in the north uh, on the east coast where it blows northeast wind pretty hard. So see. it's kind of proportionate. But, yeah, but it's from the end, I mean, the beginning of November to the end of uh, May, we very rarely weather out. Mm. So, so your weather's so stable that you really don't often have a condition that, that changes your fishing, do you? Yeah, it would be rare. It would yeah. be really oh, rare. That's something. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. in the mornings, you know, we'll get hard offshores. But like I said, it's usually by 
eight thirty nine, nine thirty, ten, eleven, it, it it calms way down. I see. Well, I tell you what, that what that means is there's not a bad time to go there. <laughs> like like where you and I where you and I live right here in northeast Florida, it ain't a good time to come here to go fishing. You uh you need to be fishing over in Nassara this time of year. Craigie Yeah, wait. but when you can get when you get out here it's good though. Yeah, but man, have you looked at the long range forecast? We're looking at a lot of wind for a long time, buddy. I'm afraid all the way up to Christmas Eve anyway. Yep. Yep. All right, Craigie. Yep. I appreciate it, buddy, and we will talk with you now next Monday. We're we're not going to have a podcast. I'm going to be in Rhode Island, so I'll talk to you in two weeks, and you have a fantastic Christmas. Same to you, brother. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Craig. Now it's time to start Florida. Let's check up in the northeast corner with a gentleman I had the privilege and the honor to fish with yesterday. I don't enjoy any fishing trips more than I do with my partner, David Borges. David, how are you? Hey, Rick, I'm doing good, doing good, buddy. Yes, good. I did enjoy yesterday. Was, and uh, I tell you what, I, I hope you sucked it up as much as you could because I don't see weather like that. It might be a while before we see a beautiful day like that. Yeah, yeah, we had just ideal conditions and the fish cooperated exactly like we hoped they would. It's uh, it's breezy now. But, but tell me yeah. how it's been for you overall. Well, you know, I mean, this was the, yesterday was a prime example of what I've been talking about. You really want to choose your days this time of year. And what I mean by that is really you can, if you look, if you study the weather and every fisherman I know, I think are, are deep down inside are, are, are weather junkies. And we always like watching the weather, keep an eye on the weather. It's something we just have to do. And this time of year in Northeast Florida, you predict those fronts. You see a front coming that's going to bring us some bad, cold northeaster. Try to get out in front of that front. Get out there the day before, two days before, especially if we've got a warming trend like we did this this past week. And you're going to do pretty good. Now, the numbers aren't there, Ricky. We didn't see big numbers, but that's okay. You know what? I'll take the quality fish over the over the 20 little rat reds that we've been catching. It seems like, you know, this time of year, for some reason, when we go out, it seems like most of the fish we're catching are, are quality fish. You're not, you're not going to get a bunch of them, but, man, make every bite count. And that's the first thing I tell my clients when they get on board is we're not going to get a lot of bites, but when you get one, you've got to make it count. And the fish are being very finicky, very funny. Uh, they have a tendency to, to – um, they're, 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 they have a tendency to hit it and, and play with their food. They'll hit it and spit it out, hit it and spit it out. And I've been seeing that in a lot of places, and a lot of captains have been saying the same thing. And I actually challenge my people to say, hey, nobody usually catches their first fish. Everybody misses their first one. And, you know, the, the, but you'll see when you get that first bite of what I'm talking about, you'll think it's time to set the hook when you probably should have let them have it about three more seconds. Mm -hmm. So you really got to let them eat it. And, uh, but the quality's there. We're seeing some, not, we're seeing some trout, nothing really big, but, but lots of trout. Seems like the bigger ones are closer to the river or, or in the river. Uh, along the intercoastal, it seems like most of those trout are small. Now you can find some good holes back in the creek that will hold trout. But for the most part, I'm not seeing you know, big trout in those holes. But what you will pick up here and there in those creek holes are, are flounders. And we are seeing, uh, we are picking up a few here and there. But, um, you know, the, the best bite right now, to me, the best thing to do uh, is to go out and fish for redfish and, and try to sight fish them if you can. Uh, our water clarity, Rick, here has been up and down, up and down. One day, it's going to be really clear, and then two days later, for some reason that I don't understand, uh, it's muddy again. But, David, isn't it a general rule of thumb that the colder it gets, the clearer our water is? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that seems to be the case, you know. We had water temperature, Rick, this past week creep all the way back up to 65 and, and above. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's, that's, that's come back up quite a bit when we were talking about water temperatures below 65. 
And, uh, you know, we were see, we saw them, I think, as low as 62 and 63. So they, they've creeped back up. And, you know, you, know, you, you just wonder what's that temperature uh, where the algae dies or, or the algae just uh, sinks to the bottom. What is that magic temperature? Mm-hmm. Uh, we've always thought it was 65, but, th- you know, don't quote me on that one. Yeah. I, I think we've seen the, the end of the warmer water, at least for the next few weeks. And um, I, I think you're going to be able to sight fish soon. The only difficulty with sight fishing is when you see a redfish, he's already seen you, right? Exactly, exactly. And stealth. And that's why, you know, you asked me on the radio show about going to a smaller jig head. The, the, yes, sometimes I will, but the downside is that I want my clients, when we get up on them flats, I want them to be able to cast as far as they yep. can. It's real important that you make long and accurate casts this time of year. So you can go with a lighter line because the fish aren't going to fight you quite as hard as they do in the summer and the spring. Uh, so you can go with a lighter line. And the thing is, is you really got to make those long casts. And, and what I like to do this time of year, Rick, is when I go out scouting for fish, I usually just put the trolling motor down. I don't have a rod and reel in my hand and I'm just looking for schools of red. And nine out, nine out of 10 times, when you find a school, if you know what tide you're on, you're going to go back a day, two days later, and that same school will be there. Mm-hmm. All right, David, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed my, my red fish on the half shell on the grill last night. Threw a little coating of crab cake on there, and holy smokes, I was in heaven. I appreciate you so much. Now, next week I'm going to be in Rhode Island. We won't have a podcast, but I'll talk to you in two weeks if that's okay. Absolutely, and everybody have a Merry Christmas. All right, buddy, we appreciate it. Captain David Boris from right here in Northeast Florida. Time to check in with East Central. That means one Jimmy Ross. Jim, how are you? Doing fantastic this week, Rick. How are you? Um, well, I think I was doing a little better before this cold front moved in. I'm pretty doggone chilly now, but we'll get through it. Tell me how you fish and spin. Well, it uh, it shut our bite down today. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, the morning was okay, even though we had that full moon. The afternoon trip, though, it slowed considerably. And then, of course, the rain ran us. Uh, we got through a couple of rounds of drizzle. Uh, but then the real heavy stuff started to come in, so we we got pushed off the water and had to shut down early. But it did. We we only caught 12 trout on the afternoon trip, so it it was considerably slower than than the four times that amount plus a couple of redfish we had on the morning trip. Oh, I see, I see. Well, doesn't sound to me like it's been too bad generally for you. Then wait a minute. Time no, out. Time overall out. the bite's good. Time out. We got uh-huh. a, we got a northeaster blowing, and what's the stage of the moon? Full, full, huh. and full. What do you know about that? <laughs> what do you know? The, the, and as you know, the meteorologists tell me every year there's no correlation between the full moon and the northeasters. And I'm like, that's funny. Because <laughs> every, <laughs> yeah. every, every time my backyard floods, I'll walk out there when the northeast wind will be cranking and the big old moon will be staring at me. Well, I'm glad to hear yeah. that now. Has anything happened offshore or has it been shut down by the weather completely? I haven't heard of anybody that's been out in a couple of days now. Um, it was a little rolly for the guys that did get out back on Friday. I, I did talk to a couple of guys that got out on Friday and Saturday. It was a little rolly. Um, there wasn't a whole lot happening, and it was those guys were mainly just running out to catch a couple kingfish and get back to the dock um, before the winds picked up. Sunday, I didn't I didn't get any reports at all, and then uh, of course uh, today being Monday, we've got uh, this front pushing through and uh, morning bite was good despite that full moon but like i said the afternoon the weather really shut us down hard yeah but jimmy i gotta tell you the boats our boats that made it out saturday we had calm waters here up saturday they they clobbered the blackfin tuna everybody was limited and they were looking for something to do by 12 o'clock because there wasn't much there wasn't much biting except big fat blackfin tuna a lot of, lot of now, 20, were they, were they getting plus. Were they getting those fish on, on by chunking them up? Or no, were they no, getting those on the fish troll. on the troll? On the troll. Okay. Yeah, right along the break. And uh, they were they were schooled up. The charter boats, uh, you know, even the bigger boats that carried eight people, they'd have their 16 by 10, 30, 11 o'clock looking for something to do. So the tuna are around if your boats can get back out, Cap. We... Well, I'll tell you, you're probably going to have Cobia next 
Woo, come and on. we're probably going to have those tuna. Come on. Because if this northeaster does what it's supposed to do and pushes some colder water back in, that edge that those tuna are on will be down here in central Florida whenever it's able, whenever we're able to get back out. That's true. And hopefully all of those cobia that are off of the Carolinas will get shoved down to you guys. Man, I, I don't know what to think about the Carolinas and cobia. They just – I, they get big old pigs up there that we never get anymore. I don't know. I don't know if that's a separate migration of fish or, or what, Jimmy. But um, I got to tell you, we do not see the fifty and sixty pound cobia like we used to. You know what I was wondering, Rick. So as things progress and and we learn more and and probably forget more than we ever learned, but you know that's what happens to us older guys. I'm almost convinced that when we get a really, really, really cold winter, uh-huh. we get we get somebody else's cobia. Yeah, you may be right. You may be right. Yeah, and I'm almost thinking that those cobias that that we you you would get them more than we do, but the ones that that we only occasionally get, those bigger ones like that, mm-hmm. I'm almost I'm almost convinced that they're staging off of the Carolina coast on the deeper wrecks, maybe in 150 to 180 feet of water. Yep. 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 Because those guys don't get that far in the wintertime very often at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where we, you know, you guys are still, it's a, it's a little bit of a run for you, and it's a little bit of a run for us, but we go out there, but we don't necessarily get them, except when those colder winters happen. And I've noticed over the years that the best cobia runs that we get are by far the years that are it's cold and, and push the mass, uh, the, the mass of cobia that is in the Atlantic down south of us and then as it warms in the spring they come back up otherwise they just seem they seem to be sprinkled from here all the way past you guys and they tend to just hold on those wrecks where those that are holding bait and so i'm thinking that you know if we get a good cold weather we're actually getting somebody else's cobia than what we would normally get i'll I'll, I'll vote for it i promise because the ones we've been getting around here are either illegal or barely legal i mean they don't they don't make uh, over we'll we'll have a group of fish come up, but Jimmy, it may be fifteen shorts and one legal that are that are in the group. It's just now, if they good. were red, if if they were redfish, they would be perfect. That's but right. Not that's fish. right. It, <laughs> that's right. Now now that's good for the future. We hope, but um, yeah. but for right now, you go home hungry. A lot of trips, even when you catch cobia, you may catch five yeah. or six, and one of them is legal. Cap, we appreciate it as always. Please tell me now. Well, I'll be checking with you in two weeks. I'll be uh, out of town next week, so in two weeks we'll be back together and do it again. If that's okay with you. Looking forward to it, everybody out there. Have a merry Christmas, uh, happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever it is Watch you celebrate, it. Okay. and uh, Festivus, you know, whatever it is. Just just, just have an incredible next two weeks, no matter what it is that you celebrate or don't celebrate. And hopefully we all get out and get a chance to go fishing and catch some nice fish. I will be celebrating, and it's Christmas, not the holiday season. All right, love you, brother. Talk to you in <laughs> two care. weeks. Take care. Bye now. All right, thanks to Jim Ross for a great East Central report where he had a good morning but said that northeast wind finally got to cranking so hard this afternoon it pretty well shut him down. I know I don't think they fished out of out of my favorite fishing village today, Stewart, Florida, but they have been lately, haven't they, John Earhart? Yes, sir. Uh, believe it or not, there was, there was quite a few boats that went out this morning. It was it was maybe two to four foot, you know, out of the north, so it was a little bit choppy. But you know, they were catching some sailfish and mahi in about 120 feet of water, Good. up to maybe about 1 160, and that was pretty much straight out front. Uh, we've been getting a few live baits here and there, but, but predominantly we've been just trolling Dead Valley who with uh, with mullet wedges, you know, and that's been pretty productive for bringing those sailfish up when they're when they're sitting down in the water column a little deeper this time of year. Uh, is anything changed sailfish fishing more than the invention of dredges? Not that I'm aware of. I yeah. mean, you know, the, the rig. The rigs change year to year, but those mullet dredges, they're the same every year. You know, you might put a different thing on the end of it, but, you know, the mullet is tried and true. You put it on you put it on a dredge and you drag it down 5 to 20 feet below the surface, as deep as 30 feet, and, I mean, you're going to draw up some of those sailfish, and, and they're usually going to be pretty willing to eat a value if you got it in the right area and you're spread. Yep. Uh, anything going on inshore? The inshore fishing's been pretty steady this week. We're catching a lot of pompano. Uh, we've been getting some bigger snook, actually. You know, usually I'm, I'm seeing a lot of smaller snook this time of year, but we're, we're catching a lot of bigger snook this week around the bridges. Uh, there's been a few tarpon around, uh, some, some real big jacks today.
today in the river, which was nice. We were still in top waters and catching those until, until the arms got sore. Uh, you know, a few bonefish here and there on the on the tailfish flats, you know, mixed in with the pompanel, a lot of small jacks and ladyfish and a few flounder. So, I mean, it's been a good mixed bag. It's been plenty of action. I got you. All right, Cap, well, that sounds outstanding. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Yes, sir. I look forward to talking to you next week. Captain John Earhart checking in from Stewart, Florida. Had a little phone trouble there. I apologize for that, but um, we got through it. Let's press on. But before we go, let's get a word first from DOA. Yep, the water is chilling down. It is getting cool. And, of course, that means that, like the great fish always do, the biggest and baddest of so many species we fish for will soon be holding in deeper water in an attempt to keep warm. You name it, if it feeds deeper in the water column, it can't refuse the DOA terrorize. It dives straight down and it crawls across the bottom with an action that no deep feeder can resist. Whether it's a crappie deep under some lily pads or a tarpon rooting around the bridge pylons, DOA makes a size and color terrorize they can't say no to. Flashing that big bright eye in front of any bottom feeding game fish is just unfair. Maybe that's why they call DOA the unfair advantage. Our thanks to John Earhart, who said the sailfish started out strong this morning, but it got too rough for the boys to hang in off Stewart this afternoon. That means it's time to head down to South Beach and check in with the mayor himself, one Captain Alan Sherman. Alan, how are they biting for you? Um, how's what biting? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of that. Well, you know, we got a big weather system heading our way, and uh, although the weather was gorgeous today, and the bait fish were plentiful everywhere we went, pilchards and um, ballyhoo, more bait than you could shake a stick at. Uh-huh. But for whatever reason, the fish just didn't seem interested in them. Uh, you know, I do mostly do the inshore side, but today, because it was so nice, we went offshore. And with two blacked out live wells, we we, we used up one, one live well. And most of that was in, in chumming, live bait chumming. And, uh-huh. uh, had very little come to the bait. Oh, um, there were a few, a few bonitas working the uh, Ballyhoo School uh, up off of Cape Florida. Uh, we had beautiful water offshore from Hallover Inlet all the way down to Key Biscayne. Uh, a nice blue edge, not dark blue, but a blue edge, and that was in almost to the reef. And then this little kind of uh, off-color blue, which I know the offshore guys. I love the sea for sail fishing. Uh, and I know that there were some sailfish caught, but there weren't a lot of them caught. Uh, there were a few kingfish, a few mackerel, a blackfin tuna or two. But for the most part, the guys really struggled out there today. Uh, there was a little bit of a bite early in the morning, and then it just kind of fizzled out. Plenty of people out there. The, the ocean was loaded with fishermen. And I saw a lot of them moving around, and I saw a lot of them that seemed to be drawn in by, you know, the scenario where one guy anchors or stops, right. another guy right. pulls in close, and before you know it, you've got like a, a parking lot. Right. And <laughs> we saw a couple of those, and not a rod bent amongst any of them, but uh, we covered a lot of water. So now we have a weather system coming in, and it's going to change things uh Starting, I guess, late tonight and into tomorrow. I mean, you guys probably are feeling it already up there. Well, I've um, got a heavy, ja- gonna... I've got a heavy jacket on. Does that tell you anything? Yeah, it's... yeah, and and we're going to be freezing with lows of fifty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's out of the Come northeast. Thursday morning. <laughs> it, it's out of the northeast and cranking up here, Cap. I tell you, but it that is. strikes me as so funny because if you ask me for my ideal conditions off Miami, wouldn't it be an approaching front, two live wells full of live bait, a calm day? Wouldn't you bet your money on the fact they were going to bite? I, I would have, uh, yeah, to bet the house because you just couldn't have asked for better conditions. Uh, there was a north current in the blue water. There was a south current on the inside. And uh, I'm telling you, we, we, we caught some lesser amberjacks a mutton snapper, a yellowtail snapper, some blue runners, a grouper that was too small to keep. And we had a couple of cutoffs. Uh, we had one mackerel on for a, a nice run, and then he came off. But, you know, 
for the amount of uh, you know miles we put on the boat and for the amount of bait we had, it was it wasn't much to speak of. I'm sorry now that I didn't stay on the inside and fished my waters that I usually fish because I think I could have done better. Ah, uh, but you can't look back, Cap. We all do it. It's nope. all it's all rear view mirror at that point, and uh, there's <laughs> there, that's that's not allowed. I, golly, how many nights have I spent beating myself up going? Now why did I go there? And what in the, right. why didn't I stay there? I was getting bites there. What made me chase those radio fish? I don't know. Cap, we well, the effort was there. The, uh, the the catch wasn't, and hopefully the rest of the week won't be like this, and we'll catch them up. That's the way the week goes. Thanks, Cap Mallon. We appreciate it. All right, talk to you. Take right. care, Take buddy. Care. Cap Mallon Sherman. That takes us up the west coast to the middle part. That's where we'll find Captain Ray Markham. Raymond, how are you? I'm doing just dandy. How about yourself there, Cap? I'm doing both fine and dandy. How's your fishing been <laughs> in the last week? It's been okay. There have been some ups and downs because we've had that full moon on Saturday, which kind of made things a little bit difficult. But uh, other than that, with the super low tides and stuff, it sure made fish uh, made it finding fish a whole lot easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just look for places where there's water and that's where the fish were. <laughs> Yo, there's a great idea. Look for the water. That'll do it. Sunny <laughs> sun. And, and sometimes it was a little more difficult than others. Cause, uh, to be honest with you, there was a lot of, a lot of wade fishing and a lot of walking going on. Well, so. and, and, and we've talked about that and what drives the weather in your area, the East wind, when we get a good Northeaster here, that pushes all your water away. Doesn't it? Well, it cert- well, it does. And for us, it's a north, north and northeast wind when we have uh, tides as low as two feet below the predicted level. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you've already got like a, a new or full moon like we got this weekend, <clears throat> this past weekend, um, you're, you're going to be looking at close to three to four feet below mean low water. Mm-hmm. which a lot of places that I fish, even on, on the average tides, I don't have more than three feet to fish, you know? So mm-hmm. you're looking at some walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll bet so. I'll bet so. A good time to have an air boat or a mud boat, huh? Well, I'd love to have a mud boat. Air boats I've had, they're awesome. They're very noisy, but I, I, I think they're absolute blast to, to use and and it'll get you places other places or other boats won't ever get you. Yep, that's so. for sure. Have you heard anything from offshore this week? Uh, some. Uh, guys are still, you know, working grouper are doing really well, well offshore. By well offshore, I'm looking at, at probably 100 to 125 feet, so mm-hmm. that's anywhere from 30 to 40 miles off. Um, and if, if you come in a little bit closer inside of 100 feet, uh, you're picking up quite a bit of action with um, hogfish. Oof, Guys yeah. have been steadily catching hogfish, and, and they say they're even picking a few red bit, red grouper up. But, you know, when they start opening all that stuff, it's a, it's going to be hell on wheels because the guys I, I'm talking to that are doing that off, well offshore grouper stuff, they're finding some big, big red grouper offshore. So, mm. you know, it, it's been a crazy year with, you know, warmer than normal temperatures. And those temperatures, typically you'll see uh, red grouper in the shallows. I say shallows 50 to 80 feet, but it, they've been just about non-existent. So, I don't know if it's just the water be- being warmer than the normal or, or a bunch of different conditions, but we got some changes coming. So, any, um, any pompano this week? <laughs> no, we didn't hear anything about guys fetching pompano. I don't know if they were just real tight lipped uh, and and not bragging, but more than likely, if that's the case, then next week they'll brag. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Boy, you should have been here two weeks ago. We were killing them then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've all heard that story before. Exactly. Well, Ram, glad to hear that your that your hogfish are holding up because it sure seems like there's more people than ever fishing for them. What about triple tail? Did you see any of them this week? Tri- triple tail fishing has been excellent, yeah. and I personally have not been targeting them, but the guys that are doing it. Uh, Pretty much a- along the coastal Gulf, anywhere from Sarasota to Clearwater, if they're finding crab pot buoys or 
or swim buoys or anything like that, or even act, somebody loses a five gallon bucket overboard, right. you can almost guarantee someplace offshore there's going to uh, be some triple tail to find it. So always, always good to stop and take a look when you see any kind of floatsome out there. You bet. You bet. Ray, we appreciate it as always. And, and please tell me we can check with you in two weeks when we're in a brand new year. <laughs> Yes, sir. I, I absolutely hope that's the case. And uh, Merry Christmas to you all, and uh, have a very happy new year. You too, Ray. Take care. Captain Ray Markham up in the West Central. Now, that means it's time to get into the Big Bend and find out what William tony has been up to. Our thanks to Ray Markham for a great West Central report. That means it's time to head up to Home Assassin and check in with the mayor himself, Captain William Tony. William, how are you? I'm doing good, Rick. I am watching a significant front roll through our area, and that's going to bring some different type of fishing conditions up here on the Big Bend. You know, you get that northeast wind, and all of a sudden you go from summer to winter in just an overnight time. So that's going to mix things up a little. Yeah, I think so. It uh, This time yesterday I was – I was catching redfish um, today. <laughs> you'd have to you'd have to have an <laughs> aircraft carrier to go catch them today. It's uh it's pretty doggone breezy now. Uh, before this front hit, was your week good? Absolutely. You know, the last two weeks we just had, and and you know it comes in like winter came in like a lion, but its roar just petered out here right around uh-huh. December first. And so we've had some really good, you know, a couple of weeks of just nice weather. It got a water temperature here on the Big Bend toward Homosass and Crystal River up to 74 degrees. Wow. So, is- you know, yeah, it is just perfect for everything. Now, that's all going to change once the front goes past this. I don't think it's going to freeze here. But what I suggested in my weekly report that I put out with the Florida Sportsman is that if you got family – around, you know, the Big Bend area for Christmas, and you got to get out there and entertain and catch some fish, what I suggest. we got three good rivers here on in the Citrus County area. you got Cheswiska, Homosassa, and the Crist River, and then you get up towards Cedar Key, you got the Swanee River, and then up towards Steenahatchee, you got the Steenahatchee River. The rivers offer refuge for people to get out of that cold northeast wind and bend the rod. Now, it's not going to be stellar days. You're not going to you know, fill the fish box and talk about everything. But what you're going to do is make memories. Then the fish could be ladyfish, jack crevels, some sea trout, and redfish, and black drum. And you're out of the weather, and you can just go out there. You don't have to spend the whole day. You just get out there and spend a few hours in the boat and entertain those folks that come in for Christmas, and you could be the hero. Yeah, that makes perfect sense because when it blows out of the Northeast, a lot of your areas go dry, don't they, William? Absolutely. And that's why I suggest, you know, if you got to get out, try the river. Yep. Now, when we when we talk about that, too, we're getting toward the end of December, and, we'll, and I'll talk about grouper a little bit. Uh, talked to our local captain, Chris Wilkins, today. I couldn't believe he left out, and uh, we had – you know, 20, 25 knot winds. And when I saw him leave out, I was like, I am glad I am not in that boat. But it didn't take but a couple hours. He limited out about 18 feet of water off of Citrus County here. And he said if he could have went another, you know, six to seven feet deeper, so we're talking 25 foot deep, he could have got on some really good mangrove snapper. But he said the conditions were just not there and i don't blame him he got his limit and came in safely so you know looking forward to the end of the week if the you know winds subside and everything and you got to get that grouper fix in 18 to 25 feet using live bait like uh pinfish and if you're lucky enough to get some thread fin or anything if you're further south in homosassa is great bait but frozen sardines work very well also yeah i did do they ever run into Bonita out there, William? They do. You know, I've caught a, plenty of them up toward the spoil banks up in Crystal River. And it's generally around September and October. Now, they will, you know, hang out as long as the water temperature. If I'm seeing Spanish mackerel, I'm seeing Bonito. So they're kind of hand-in-hand on the water temperature. 
And what they do, this, this area on the southern end of the Big Bend is like the breaking point. So when that water temperature drops, they shoot on south toward Tampa. But if it hangs in like it has been at that 74 degree mark, they're, they're out here. And they come in close up toward the small banks of Crystal River because of the intake canals and everything from the Duke Energy Plant is the deep water canal. So they'll follow that in. But uh, anglers that get out there in that 30 and see them all the time, as long as that water is about 70 or of above. Yes, buddy, if you want to talk about a dynamite grouper bait, give me the belly of that Bonita. He'll be all over oh, it. Ch- big strip out of that, he'll be all over it. Absolutely. And, you know, even some of the local guys I talk to that hit some of those rocks, they talk about cut mullet a lot also. Oh, so that, know that. that, you know, cut mullet will, you know, anything that's stinky and laying on the bottom, I think the grouper will eat it. Yeah, they're not real real Epicureans. They're not. <laughs> they're going to kind of eat what they can get. <laughs> Cap, we appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas. And please tell me we can talk to you after New Year's. I will be here just after New Year's, and I look forward to talking to you. And Merry Christmas, everyone. And, Rick, Merry Christmas to you and your family. And to you, too, my brother. And let's enjoy a piece of backstrap after the first of the year. Dang right, because if it blows me out of the mar, you know where I'm going to be in my tree stand. (laughs) I know you are. Thank you, Cap. (laughs) You know what Yamaha Outboards love? The genuine formula and consistency of Yamalu Marine Engine Oils. Blood, 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 blood. Outboards are subjected to punishing conditions like high loads, salt, and humidity, a mix that automotive oils can't handle. Yamalu full synthetic and marine performance formulas are certified to protect against friction and corrosion for reliable performance every time. Ah. Find Yamalu Marine Oils at your nearest Yamaha Outboard dealer. Locate them at yamahaoutboards.com backslash dealers. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Hey, Raj, you know, being consistent is a mark of a quality product. If you've been Florida's number one chum for over 10 years, there's got to be a reason. For 10 years, Tournament Master Chum has lived up to his name. That's why more tournament pros insist on Tournament Master than any other chum. It's the only chum with Menhaden milk mixed right in. That means it gets a scent out faster and deeper than any other brand of chum. It comes in a grind size for every species from kingfish to catch and bait. Your fishing time is way too precious to use second-rate chum. Bring the action to you by insisting on Tournament Master Chum. It's worth every penny. When you're ready for the finest in custom-made flat spay or inshore-offshore hybrids, you are ready to meet the Young family in Inglis, Florida. For over 21 years, the Young family has built custom boats one at a time for every type of fishing. Nothing can sneak up on a flat quite like the Gulf Shore flats boats, and I've never fished a better hybrid than the Young 24s and 27s. Rob Young is a naval architect who takes tremendous pride in each and every build for each and every customer that wants their boat custom-built exactly the way they want it is it time for you to move up are you ready to own the finest boat built then you need to visit the young boat facility in inglis florida or check them out online at youngboats.com our thanks to captain william tony for a great report said that this northeast wind has left him with a lot of high and dry areas let's find out how it is a little further around with captain kevin lanier kevin how are you hey captain rick we're doing great how about yourself doing outstanding my boy uh, any fish biting over there? Uh, we got some fish biting. We haven't been able to get out much this week because of that same northeast wind, which we've all been struggling with. But uh, the guys that are getting out are catching fish, and those groupers are still hungry. Uh-huh. Uh, seems like your gag grouper numbers were good this year. Uh, it seems like it, and it's really, really been good uh, here in December. I mean, mm-hmm. I've just been really amazed at how many guys are having that's right now. Oh, that's outstanding. How's the size? Uh, size is, I would say, between legal and 30 inches. That's good fish. That's good eating fish there, Cap. There ain't no oh, doubt. Oh, no question. Now, let me ask you a question. Over here on the East Coast, Kevin, it's become impossible to grouper fish. Uh, now, it's gotten so bad that when we anchor up, uh, quite often the red snapper will come to the surface while we're baiting up, waiting waiting for people to start throwing baits in and such. How on earth are you getting through all the red snapper to get to the grouper? I think a lot of ours, uh, one of the things that I do is I go as big on the baits as I can put on, um, which if you're going to get a, uh, you're going to get a red snapper, it's going to be a sow. It's going to be huge. Right. Uh, 
we do catch small ones here and there, but um, I don't know. We just, uh, if we're, we get two or three, four red sample, we're moving. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we're going. And another thing I found is hanging on the edges of some of the uh, uh, reef areas uh, ha- gets us a little bit out of the red snapper as well. Okay. Do the grouper tend to go off of the reef into the sand a little bit more? Well, what I'm finding, most of my grouper come off spots that you probably wouldn't see if you didn't have a strong enough transducer. Right. Okay. Okay. You know, just a couple of puffs on the bottom, a couple of, you know, that's where when I go back on the history on my depth center and look, that's where that line's coming up from, are those little small croppings instead of the big reef area. Because I think the big reef areas, like we've got the hard bottom, they're just covered up with red snapper. I mean, it's just covered up. Yep, yep, they sure are. There's no question about that. Well, that's good. You haven't run into any blackfin tuna lately, have you? No, I think our blackfin tuna for the for the uh, year might be done. Um, we haven't the uh, water temperatures dropped down quite a bit, so um, these guys are willing to run sixty miles. They may find some, but right now in our normal fishing grounds where we got them in the summer, we're not seeing them. Ooh, boy, they are they are sixty miles off Jacksonville. I can promise you that. We had uh, we had several charter boats yesterday <clears throat> that were looking for something else to do by 11 o'clock because they had their legal limits, <laughs> their legal limits of two per person. So, uh, that's, that's some, that's some very good tuna fishing for our area. Well, Cap, I'm, oh, absolutely. I'm glad to hear that your grouper season went well. Now, when does red snapper reopen for you? Uh, right now we don't reopen till, you know, normally we open on June 1st. So we're all pointed in that direction right now. Okay. So when you're grouper fishing, closes at the end of the year then then you're pretty well shut down till june 1st yeah well the way they've got things set up now basically about the only thing we can keep is uh you know vermilions um you know some porgies some uh black snapper if you can find them because red grouper is still shut down for us and triggers and amberjack so you know it gets kind of tough this time of year (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know what? That's okay, though. There's nothing wrong with vermilions and porgies. They they end up awfully good on the table. There's no doubt about that. So, Oh, I don't argue with you a bit. But uh, still well worth a lot fishing. of times, yeah, yeah, a lot of times uh, people want to go on charters. When I go down the list, you know, sometimes they'll go, well, we'll come back a little bit later in the year. So, I, And I can understand that. I can understand both sides, but <laughs> I hate to admit this, but when it gets so bad that they say, okay, only one-eyed grunts. That's all you can keep is one-eyed <laughs> grunts. I'm going to be the best one-eyed grunt fisherman I can be. That's, that's just, it's in me. I can't I get it out. I agree with you. Cap, we yeah, appreciate it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. And please tell me we can check with you next year. Uh, we will touch base with you the next time. And I hope everyone has a great uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Kevin. Captain Kevin Lanier. For the Northwest area. Now, that means it's Tyler Massey time. It's time to get out of Florida headed west. Tyler, how are you? We're doing good, Rick. How are you guys? Uh, good, good. It's cold here. Is it cold over there? Yeah, it's, it's chilling down for sure. You know, it's been you know pretty mild so far this winter. Uh-huh. Um, nothing too consistent. But, yeah, we get, you know, we're finally getting some weather in the 40s and stuff. So, definitely cooling down a little bit. Hopefully, make some fish move into their, more of their winter patterns for sure. Yep. How's your fishing been this week? So fishing's been pretty good. You know, we've been sticking inshore mostly. And, uh, you know, we've been catching a few sheep's head, a few redfish and white trout, um, mostly sticking with the with the bridge fishing, um, you know, like we've talked about before. Um, you know, this time of year, it's just the, the fish are they're not going to be super spread out over the flats and stuff. Uh, they're going to be more on structure and deeper parts. So, um, you know, bridge fishing is just a good, easy option. It gives you a lot of variety. Uh, try to do you know, different stuff they try to catch. Tyler, what's a big sheep's head over there? Um, so big, a big one, um, you know, is in, in the spring run, we do see some in, in the 10 pound range oh. you know, from seven to 10 pounds. But I, you know, uh, a six or five or six pounder is a real nice one this time of year. Yes, a lot of the is. fish are in that 14 to, you know, 18 inch range this time of year. Yep. Yep. I'm with you. I've, a five pound sheep's head is a fine one. I've never broken 10. I've been, well, I shouldn't say that. I think I have broken 10, but but uh, not officially. And, and a 10-pound sheep's head is a rare, rare animal anymore. Believe it or not, I saw one weighed 
uh, one time that that uh, my daddy was weighing for a friend of his fifteen three. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a monster. Yeah, the <laughs> biggest one I've seen. You know, we see a couple. You know, eight to ten pounders on our charters every year. Uh, the biggest one I've ever seen in person was a twelve pound fish. It came out of our our past in the springtime. It's just a you know awesome awesome fish. Big spawning females. That's right. So the ocean looks like it's closed for you guys for a little while. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, it's, it's super hit or miss this time of year. You know, as far as weather goes, it's a, a much uh, you know more for sure thing to stay in the bay. Got you, Tyler. As always, we appreciate it. Our best of the holidays to you. We're gonna get back together if it's all right with you. The first week in 2022. Sounds good, Rick. I'll be here. Thank you, Tyler. That wraps up our trip around the state. But before we wrap up today's show, let's get a word in from Shimano. The year was 1953 when one of the true pioneers of big game fishing hung it up. Hey, it was none other than the great Ernest Hemingway. And get this, here's what he said. I just don't want to do it anymore. The tackle has become so sophisticated, the fish just don't have a chance. That's hard to believe if you look back at the stuff he had back then. Can you imagine walking him through the aisles of strike zone fishing and showing him the latest and greatest from Shimano? Can you imagine handing him a Saragossa spinner that weighed less than his bait and could put more torque on a rampaging tuna than the giant old reels of his day? No, Ernest, I'm afraid you left us way too early. The fights with the great fish still go on today, and we still sometimes get beat. But if I were a sea monster of your day, I think I'd rather do battle with you than face the tools that Shimano has stocked strike zone fishing with some 68 years later. Been a lot of fun this evening. Everybody seems to be getting into the holiday spirit. We got a strong northeaster on us. Our weather's cooling down dramatically. David Borey said that the redfish were fantastic up until today, but now it looks like a few days before he'll be able to go find them again. Jim Ross had a great morning this morning on trout, but said that uh, once again, strong northeast winds have made Mosquito Lagoon very difficult to fish. John Earhart lives for these strong northeast winds. The sailfish bit well this morning, and they will only get better as we get further into the colder weather. Alan Sherman was kind of in a grumpy mood today. He had had a whole lot of bait for his charter today, two live wells full of bait and nothing to eat them. That doesn't happen very often you go over to the West Coast, and I got to tell you, Greg Stamper's never in a bad mood, but even he admitted things had gotten a little tough for everything but Pompano. His Pompano fishing has been exceptionally good. He's seeing some four- and five-pound fish. Those are monster Pompano. Ray Markham said that the hogfish are biting very well in deep water over on the West Coast. The numbers seem to be holding up for both hogfish and triple tail, despite the fact that there's more people specializing in them every day. Now, the Pompano have been a little scarce for him lately. Is that the cold weather? Well, they may have pulled on south from there. William Tony says you got to stick in the rivers in the Big Bend area now that the flats are dry. There's literally no water all blown out by the Northeaster. So go have a good time in the rivers. You can catch a few reds and trout. Don't have to spend the whole day there, but it's worth visiting if you want to get outside. Kevin Lanier is wrapping up what has been a very good grouper season for him over there. Man, I wish we had him on the East Coast like they do over there. But the end of the year will signal the end of his grouper fishing. Tyler Massey spent most of his time fishing around bridge pylons, catching redfish and sheep's head. Well, this is it for this year for Florida Sportsman Podcast. I got to tell you, we're taking Christmas week off, so it'll be a new year when we get back together. I know I'm very thankful for everybody that has contributed, everybody that has weighed in on our podcast. It seems to be getting more popular all the time. Tell you what, I wish you'd go on and rate us. Let us know how you like it, and let us know what you don't like. And if you've got questions that you'd like me to pose to one of the podcasters, just drop it to Rick at floridasportsman.com and I'll make sure and pose your question for you on our next broadcast. So until next year when we'll be back with another Action Spotter podcast it'll be brought to you by Yamaha Reliability Starts Here by Shimano bringing people and nature together by Tournament Master Chum oh it's the best chum on earth by Nasara Paradise Rentals your dream billfish destination by DOA Lures the unfair advantage and by Young Boats you want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids, you need to check out youngboats.com. I hope you've had as good a year as I have. We'll be back. 
with the 2022 version of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast next year. Until then, I'm Captain Rick Riles, and I'll see you on the ring.